tonight from the Berry Center in Cypress, Texas. We welcome you in to Friday Night Hoops on FoxSportsHouston.com. Our FoxSportsHouston.com Game of the Week tonight featuring a 17-5A matchup between the Langham Creek Lobos and the Cypress Ridge Rams. Hi, everybody. I'm Lonnie King. And alongside Coach Joe Price tonight, we're going to bring you all the action of this one. And, Coach, this is a game that features size for Langham Creek against speed for Cypress Ridge. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, you know, from speaking from a coaching standpoint, you'd like to have a combination of both. But, you know, from the high school level, you have to take the hand that you dealt. And fortunately, Langham Creek has all the size, and Cy Ridge doesn't. And, uh, you know, sometimes size matters. But we're going to find out tonight just, just how much the quickness of, of the little guys can come into play, too. Well, and sometimes quickness can uh, counteract a lot of size if you got the speed to get by those big men. That's exactly right. You know, from a coaching standpoint, you know, you set your game plan up with, hey, we got to go with pressing and fast breaking and doing things like that because from a size standpoint, they can pound it inside all night and, and hit those boards and just, you know, just kill you like that. These two teams have gotten off to different starts in the district. Langham Creek comes in. 3-0 in district play, 17-7 overall. Cypress Ridge, on the other hand, has gotten off to an 0-3 start in the district, but they've been three very close losses. And, Coach, is that uh, for a team a discouraging thing, or do you look for a chance to bounce back? Well, you definitely look for a chance to bounce back. You know, like you said, uh, Cy Ridge has played three games that have all been close, and pretty much uh, Langham Creek has played three that has all been blowouts. But Cy Ridge is right there on the edge, you know, 0-3. You know, when it comes to district play, records don't matter. You know, teams just come in every night trying to look for a win. And these two teams will be looking for that tonight. These are uh, a couple of schools who will put some points on the board, and we expect to see that tonight. We've got a visit with both the head coaches, and when we come back, we'll visit with Charles Amen, the head coach of the Langham Creek Lobos, after that, we'll visit with Steve Dibble of the Cypress Ridge Rams. And then we'll have all the action for you from the opening tip to the final buzzer coming up straight ahead when we return on FoxSportsHouston.com. Netter Staffing Services has one of the largest temporary health divisions in the Houston area. Each week, the company pays over 2,000 temporaries, working on many and varied assignments. Metter Staffing can help your company when you have needs for your employees. Call us at 713-941-0616 to speak with one of our experienced staffing consultants who can assist you with your staffing challenges. That number is 713-941-0616. They now offer video resumes as a job-seeking tool. Ask about it today. Metter Staffing. They know the people you need to know. Free game show continues and we're joined now by Charles Amitt, the head coach of the Langham Creek Lobos. And coach, uh, first of all, good to see you tonight. Congratulations on your season to this point. You're off to a real nice start. Yeah, um, we've, we've had a great start. Um, we've played some of the best teams in the district uh, or in the state actually. And um, we, we felt like this year had a chance to be a special group. And because of that, we went and got in as many difficult tournaments as possible to get us ready for district race. And uh, hopefully if we take care of business in the district, um, you know, in the playoffs to prepare. So this group of kids coming back, uh, they're really excited. Uh, we had seven guys coming back from last year's team that went 21 and 11, um, exited the first round in the playoffs. And that's something that's really fueled their fire in the off season. So they were really expected to, you know, come in and they put in a lot of hard work. It's been a fun group to coach so far. Well, you're 17 and seven, and it, in addition to that fuel from last year's first round loss, you had to overcome some tough losses this year. Yeah, uh, we feel like just, you know, we're right there because of our, our schedule. We've played some of the best teams in the state, like I've said, and, uh, and, and I feel like that in order to be able to take that step and be one of the best teams, you gotta go play those guys. And we've been one or two possessions away from, um, you know, pulling those games off against those top competition teams. And we feel like in the long run, it'll make us better. Personnel-wise, you lost a key uh, part of your team yeah. early in the season. Yeah, uh, Ryan Patrick was a kid that we lost at ACL um, against Flower Man Marcus in the fourth game of the season. Uh, he's probably the best leader I've ever coached, and uh, he was just that guy that just refused to uh, to lose, and, and the other kids just followed him. You know, so we took a step back because of that, and it was a devastating loss to our team and our program, just because of who the kid is, character-wise. Uh, took a step back, probably a few games, 
um, that, that maybe we, we would have won if he had been in. But, you know, those are things you can't really control. And uh, as a result, you know, our kids have done a great job of figuring out who we are and, and, and moving forward as a result of that. And one thing you're blessed with is some size on that yeah. front line. That gives some guys, uh, some teams matchup problems. Yeah, sure. You know, I think that even coming into this season, one of the things with us is that we had to um, – our versatility at all of those spots. And we were just an unselfish team. It's one of the things that is probably the best group I've ever coached as far as character-wise, uh, being unselfish, doing the things it just takes to win. Uh, we've got four kids that could probably score 20 points a game, but they give it, they, they, they average, you know, 13, 14 points a game. And in any night, any of them can still score 20 points, but they, they understand that they're going to be great if they do it collectively. So it's been a fun group, and we're, we're really looking forward to the district race. Well, it should be fun tonight. We look forward to seeing your team in action. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, thanks for coming out and supporting high school basketball in the state of Texas. That's Charles Amitt, the head coach of the Langham Creek Lobos. We'll be back and visit with Steve Dibble, the head coach of the Cypress Ridge Rams, when we return on FoxSportsHouston.com. Remember when I got my first Texans football? <laughs> then, of course, I had to have my own Texans jersey. Well, nothing beats this year when I got my own Texans checking account. Now, it's my turn. I got this one, Dad. Exclusively at First Community Credit Union. Your choice of designs, plus chances to win great prizes, trips, and game day tickets for all Texans checking account holders. You think these make me look taller? Game day every day. Carry the Texans in your wallet. Exclusively at First Community Credit Union. TexansChecking.com. And we're joined by Steve Dibble, the head coach of the Cypress Ridge Rams. And, Coach, first of all, it's good to see you. This should be a fun game tonight. You've got a very entertaining team to watch. Well, thanks. We've put up a lot of shots, and hopefully to our end we'll score a lot of points. <laughs> well, you have so far this year. you got a lot of high-scoring games, and even in your losses, it hadn't been for a lack of being able to put the ball in the basket. Correct. We do. We, we shoot a lot of threes. We try to run and gun and kind of create a – uh, because of our size, try to create a mismatch against against other teams that may not be used to going at that pace. Well, in your pre-district season, you had a good run through some of the tournaments, uh, struggled a little bit to start the district season. Talk a little bit about the way this season has progressed to this point for you. Well, you know, at first it's a little surprising. We're a young team, majority. I only have three seniors, so we kind of knew we were going to take our lumps and there was going to be a learning curve. Uh, we only have two that were returning from the varsity so we kind of you know we, we put in a new system and so we get the kids trying to adjust to what we're doing when they were used to really slowing it down and now we've sped it up a little bit so we're pleased they over the Christmas holiday they won a tournament we we're excited about that a couple games where they they got down by a lot of points and and came back and won it and district it's kind of been the same thing we've kind of dug ourselves a hole early and rally back and then just kind of fall short so we're we're close we're just not there yet. And in this district, I would imagine, uh, even though you've, you've dropped the first three and three close games in your start, it, 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 there's still plenty of time left in 17-5A play. Yes, there is. I mean, you're looking at a, a tough district, a competitive district, and so we're trying to keep the kids focused and understanding it's not time to abandon ship yet, but that we, there's plenty of games left, and we just go out there and continue to do what, what we're capable of doing. Well, tonight, you go up against Langham Creek. What kind of challenges do they present for you? All kinds. First of all, they're huge. They're they're big, and so that's going to you know create a huge mismatch for us. Being our our tallest guy is six two six three, so we've got to do that. They're a disciplined team. And they're a good team. They're they're a team that's used to used to winning. They have that experience, and so we've got to we've got to kind of stick to our game plan, and and go from there. Good luck to you. Appreciate you stopping by. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. That's Steve Dibble, the head coach of the Cypress Ridge Rams. We'll come back with the starting lineups and all the action tonight on FoxSportsHouston.com. If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Chances are you spent plenty of time dreaming about it. Nothing but carefree days of doing whatever you want, whenever you want. 
retirement. You've dreamed about it, but have you planned for it? Don't put it off any longer. Turn to an agent you know from State Farm, the company you trust, to help you with annuities, health insurance, IRAs, and rollovers. Call me, Earl Thompson, today at 281-893-0550, providing insurance and financial services. When it just can't wait, come to Texas Emergency Care Center, where a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. I wanted something my whole family could enjoy. Danny loves basketball. Willie wants the batting cages. My husband's into football, and I'm training for a marathon. Then we found the sports house, and now I'm one happy mom. With single and family options available, we found the membership just right for us. The Sports House offers a range of activities with group and private lessons overseen by pro and collegiate athletes. The Sports House even has a party room and offers an additional 25% off on Sundays. Check them out at thesportshouse.net. Dream big, play hard, train smart. Now boarding group four to Barbados. Babe, no cell phones on the honeymoon. Doug, let's check this text. Oh no. What's the matter? McRib is back. I'm gonna miss it. I married a 14-year-old. McRib's saucy goodness is back for a limited time. The simple joy of big news. Back at the Berry Center, Lonnie King along with Coach Joe Price, and we're just about set for the start of tonight's contest between Cypress Ridge. They're in the road blues, and here's the starting lineups for the Rams. Trey Williams, the point guard tonight. Robert Aledu is in the backcourt with him, as is Shaq Lawson. They'll go three along the back line, and then Cameron Hernandez and Femi Onwabegbu along the front line. Not a lot of size. 6'2 is the biggest guy for head coach Steve Dibble. You heard him talk a lot about that. And here is the lineup they'll go up against. The sophomore point guard, Segura, at the point. Gilbert Carter, a senior. Quinn Taylor, also a senior. 6'6". Six six. Eric Johnson, 6'3". And the big man in the middle is Danny Newsom, a 6'9 senior. And coach, man, size is always something that's really nice to have. Kind of predict who's going to control the opening tip. And <laughs> you saw that with, with that 6'9 guy right there in the middle. Absolutely. And there's Newsom trying to finish it off after he controls the tip, and he does. And he puts Langham Creek on the board first tonight. They're in the home whites with the black numerals and red trim. And Cypress Ridge comes back the other way. Two to nothing is our score. Glad you're along for the ride tonight, wherever you are, around the city, across the state, or around the world on FoxSportsHouston.com, and there's a nice move to the hole by Trey Williams. Point guard takes it all the way in with the scoop shot. It evens it up at two and two. Johnson, hard to the hole, and he's gonna be called for the player control foul. A little bit out of control that time. Yeah, I, I don't think he realized where, what was in front of him, and you know, it's a good job of guy sacrificing his body to take the charge. That was Trey Williams you saw there on the replay that Gave it up for the team and drew the foul. First one on Johnson. Now Williams with the basketball out beyond the arc. Leaves it out left side for Shaq Lawson. They go back to Aledu. Aledu, one of the captains on this team. This is a young Cy Ridge team, but they like to shoot the three, and there's one from Williams. It won't go, and back the other way. Here comes Langham Craig. Segura on the run, takes a feed from Gilbert. It won't go, and the rebound off to Cy Ridge. We expect this tempo to stay upbeat all night. There's a three from the wing, and it's good. That's Aledu who hits it and gives Cy Ridge a 5-2 lead. Back the other way. Taylor's going to try and pull up from the wing. It won't go. Quinn Taylor, the 6-6 senior. Rebound off to Cy Ridge. Aledu for Femi O. 
Williams down the middle of the paint. Gets it to go, but let's see. They call a player control foul on Williams. Yeah, another case of sacrifice your body, and it pays off. Watch it again as Williams, and that's Segura who just took the charge. Jerome Segura, the sophomore. Here's a steal on the inbounds pass, and Lawson tries to put it up, and Taylor rejects it. Comes back out to Aledu, though. He's going to stick it from outside. No, instead, underneath the Williams. Good pass. They find Hernandez, but he can't finish it off. And Newsom pulls down the board, and Hernandez is going to draw the foul. You see that a lot. A guy misses an open look, and he comes back and commits a foul. Right. 5-2. Cy Ridge with the lead. And Langham Creek with the basketball here. 5.54 to go in the first quarter of play. Full court pressure this time by Syridge, but Langham breaks it. Back up ahead, and there's a slam dunk by Quinn Taylor. Finishes it off on the feed from Gilbert. Quickly the other way, a three put up by Tone Reynolds. He can't get it to go quickly off the bench. He's into the ball game here in the first quarter. And we expect some subs here with this fast-paced Action. Newsom with the three won't go. Johnson with the board gets it to go up and in. Well, Coach Ament told us that Newsom, his big fella, likes to shoot from the perimeter. But that means Johnson's got to be up and under the bucket for the rebounds, and he was that time. Gets it to go and adds the free throw. He's got three in the game, and it's seven to five now. Langham Creek quickly with five in a row. On the run, baseline, Reynolds can't get it to go with a reversal. And the other way, here comes Langham. Newsom out in the corner to Gilbert. He puts up a three short. Newsom pulls down the board back to Gilbert. Find the open man, and that is Eric Thomas, who's checked in. Down to Taylor, and he travels on the baseline, and Syridge will get the ball. 5.03 to go here in the first quarter of play. Ridge comes into this game averaging 70 points, nearly 70 points a game. There's a runner right through the middle of the paint. It's up and through, and that one's put up by Reggie Palayo, the sophomore guard who's checked in. There's the answer, though, on the other end, and it is good, and I believe that was Taylor who got the bucket, and he will go to the line. We don't have time to catch our breath, Coach. I tell you, it's fast and furious. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Taylor quickly up the floor. He got the answer and will go to the line. It's 9-7. Taylor's got four now trying to add to it. Taylor into the game tonight. Just a 25% free throw shooter. Doesn't get to the line a lot. And misses that one. Here's a long distance jumper. That one's put up by Lawson. Won't go. Missed everything. They're going to say it's out of bounds off of Langham Creek. It'll stay in possession of the Rams. Cypress Ridge 12 and 10 coming into this one overall on the season. 0 and 3 in 17-5A play. Inbounds to Lawson. He had a good look underneath. Couldn't get it to go. And the uh, outlet is stolen away by Hernandez. Back to Lawson from the baseline. Won't go. And this time, Taylor controls the board. Up ahead to Marcus Gilbert, and it goes off his leg and into the arms of Caleb Hobbs, but that's over and back, and it'll give the ball back to the Rams. Palladu to Lawson, stolen away by Gilbert. On the run, two on one. Gilbert to the hole, Rouse out, won't go. And we've got a foul, so that is going to be called on Marcus Gilbert, it looks like. I'm sorry, Gilbert Carter, excuse me, and... Was it an offensive foul? That's the call. So I guess they called him for clearing out with that right arm, right elbow. Gives the ball back to Cy Ridge. Quick trigger jumper from the wing for Orlando. Won't go, rebound. Tipped out of bounds. Newsom controlled it, tried to pass it to Segura. Knocked out by Femi O. Coach Steve Dibble said, just call him Femi O all night. He'll be happy. Here's a steal 
Up the floor, Cy Ridge on the run. Into the corner, it's Williams. Short on the three. Turn around in the paint from Femi, and he gets it to go. Ties it up at 9-9, 3.43 to go here in the first quarter of play. Full court pressure again, secure it to Carter. Carter lays it off the glass for two. 11-9 now is the score. Hernandez answers, misses everything. Touched the net, but on the wrong side. Back the other way, here's a runner, and we got a blocking foul going to be called. Caleb Hobbs made the move to the basket, and he will go to the line to shoot a pair. That says again, Coach, that time looked like that was Reggie Palaio who tried to get set. But he leaned the body at the last minute. I tell you, this game is at a pace where both teams are going to have to use their bench quite a bit. I know Cyrus has already <laughs> brought five in <laughs> after about the first two minutes. Five different players. Free throws are good, and 13 to 9 is our score. Here's a move on the right side. A lady who's going to get the bucket to go, and he will go to the line for the plus one here. Nice little move in traffic by the guard that time. Later will go to the line. He averages 15 points a game for this team. Misses the free throw this time, though, and quickly up the floor, Eric Johnson, and he's going to be called for the offensive foul. That will be number one, I believe, on Johnson. Now check at number two on Johnson. So he will have to take a seat. And that's a quick way to negate some of that size, get him into foul trouble. Exactly right. And believe it or not, we've just played five minutes in this first quarter, and Langham Creek already has eight turnovers. Yeah. Into the corner. Here is a long jumper from Spencer Smith. Won't go, and the rebound tipped around and controlled by Langham Creek. Up the floor, Darrow, and he gets it in the paint. And that was Segura, I believe, who got it to go up and in. And they're back the other way in a hurry. The Lobos by four, 15-11 on the run. It's Reynolds, he can't get it to go, but he will draw a foul. And the personal is gonna be called. Let's see who it's on. It looks like it's gonna be called on Jerome Segura. So right after he gets his first bucket, he picks up his first foul. Baseline out. That is the fifth team foul. Each side with five here in the first half. Long distance three from Reynolds. Won't go. Rattles out. The rebound controlled by Taylor. He throws it away, though. Up the floor. Here's Smith. Tried to put it up. And Taylor rejects it along the baseline. It'll be out of bounds, and it'll still be Cy Ridge basketball. Yeah, they're bringing fresh troops in about every every two minutes. <laughs> and they're not just bringing one or two at a time. Like you said, this is a whole fresh five, it looks like, coming out there. Well, if you're going to go at that pace, you gotta got to keep those legs fresh. Got to have some fresh legs. Inbounds. Nearly a five-second call, and now we've got a whistle, and that's going to be a travel called on Trey Williams. There's another turnover. High Ridge not quite turning it over as fast as Langham Creek is. Full court pressure again. Carter up ahead. He gets it to Newsom. He can't finish it off, though, and the rebound off to Cy Ridge. L.A. do to Williams. Back out top to Hernandez for three, rattles around and goes down through. Well, they like to shoot those, and they have not been very hot from outside yet tonight, but maybe that's a sign they're warming up. Newsom got the follow, wouldn't go, but he's fouled, and he will go to the line for Langham.
Well, Coach, uh, as you watch this game early, who who would you say this pace favors? It seems like this is more of the kind of pace that Cy Ridge wants to play at. Yeah, it, it seems to me Cy Ridge, you know, can control their, their own destiny by having fresh troops coming in and out about every two minutes. But from a coach's standpoint, you want to make sure those are productive minutes that, you know, each guys are, are given. Newsom got both free throws to go, and we've got a whistle on the other end of the floor. Stops the clock with 1.36 to go here in the first quarter of play and a three-point lead for Langham Creek. But Aledu will go to the line to shoot a pair. Foul was called on Eric Thomas, sophomore wingman, picks up his first personal. And the first free throw is good. <laughs> Robert Aledu, a six-foot junior, a lot of youth for Coach Steve Dibble. And his team's been very competitive, and I guess if there's anything that can – uh, even make him happier, it's to know that most of these guys are going to be back next year. That's exactly right. And, you know, I had a team like that. I was fortunate last year at, at, at North Shore that was young. And, you know, now they're all back and they're 20 and 3 right now. So yeah, that's you know, what you want. <laughs> we were talking about that before the broadcast tonight. They are off to a great start, the Mustangs this year. There is Taylor. He lost control for a minute. No whistle, and he. Couldn't get it to go. We're tied up at 17, and here come the Rams on the run. Williams stop, skip, and passes it underneath to Femi and couldn't finish it off, and there's a whistle and a foul on the rebound. Well, we'll see if we get another look at that. Watch it right here on the replay. That was Hernandez who just came in, and he tried to cut the pass off but didn't get there quick enough. One oh nine to go in the first quarter. Segura at the line, shooting a pair. Segura is a 59% free throw shooter and misses as his team is already in the bonuses. That was a seventh foul on Cy Ridge. Here's a tip and a steal by Carter. He's got a free look at the basket and lays it in for two. Lobos recapture the lead, 19-17 here. Under a minute to go, here's a runner, and Aledu answers. And for Robert Aledu, that is already 10 points. He's the first to double figures tonight. But a quick answer from uh, Gilbert Carter on the other end, and then a three. Boy, don't sit too long on this team, Coach. Fast and furious. There's a pass trying to break the press, and Carter was the intended on that one, and it was overthrown. Cy Ridge now with a 22-21 lead, 19 seconds to go in the first quarter. And they've got the basketball. See if they hold it here for one last look. They're on a pace to get up into the 90s tonight if they keep shooting like this. Backing it out, Palayo brings it right down the middle of the paint. Won't go, had Big Newsom in the middle there and he pulls down the board. On the run, time runs down, and the shot is up. It won't go, and that's the end of the first quarter of play. Eight minutes in the books, and our score is Cypress Ridge 22, Langham Creek 21. Catch your breath. We've got the second quarter coming up right after this on FoxSportsHouston.com. Let's play with your toys after dinner. It's beautiful. <laughs> Jason. Really, buddy? Wow. Samantha Jean. Guys, Christmas dinner and you're bringing toys to the table? That's, that's not a toy. Let's eat. Get low prices on the gifts they love. And layaways back so you can pay a little at a time. Save money. Live better. Walmart. I told you earlier tonight that Cy Ridge comes into this game averaging 70 points. I missed it. It's 79 points a game they average. So 
they are a scoring machine, but, Coach, they give up 74 a game. And well, that's a little faster pace than Langham likes to play at. Right. That's it's, it's a pace where Cy Ridge is, is playing right into it again tonight. We're on pace for an 80-point game tonight. Underway in the second quarter. Cy Ridge with the basketball. Here's a move through the traffic and put up and in that one by Reynolds who gets it to go down through and he's got four now off the bench for the Rams. 24-21, a three-point lead. There's a pass intended from De Eric Duro for Newsom and it was tipped away and knocked out of bounds. It'll stay in possession of the Lobos though. Carter out top. Finds Eric Duro on the wing. Can't get it to go, and the rebound is pulled down by Cy Ridge. Aledu will bring it up the floor, take it down the middle, kick it out on the wing, and there's a long jumper from Palayo. Misses everything, and Cy Ridge, the thing that is keeping Langham in the game right now, is Cy Ridge isn't shooting from the arc very well early on here. No, they not, but they, they had not made a shot they didn't like yet. <laughs> Guarantee. And their coach, uh, he he wants them to play at that tempo. And talking to Charles Amen, he said, you know, when you don't have a lot of size, you can you can uh, choose to go a couple of ways, either real slow or real fast. And they've chosen to go real fast this season, and it's worked for them for the most part. Here's a rebound pulled down by Cy Ridge up ahead. Here's a runner put up by Reynolds. Won't go. And now two on none, and Carter's going to go straight to the hole, and we're going to get a timeout called by Steve Dibble. He didn't like that turnover, and he'll take a 30-second timeout to talk it over. So we will as well. See what uh, happened there. I think basically what happened was HBU has returned to NCAA Division I Athletics. Come and enjoy the most intimate setting of all of Division I. HBU Athletics is also the most affordable entertainment option in Houston. The HBU Huskies, a member of the Great West Conference, experience success on the field with conference championships in women's soccer, women's golf, and softball. With great recruiting classes in men's and women's basketball and baseball, HBU Athletics is on the move and on the way up. For more information on HBU opportunities in the classroom and on the field, visit us on on the web, hbuhuskies.com. Well, Coach, as you were saying <laughs> before the break there. Yeah, in that last sequence, uh, Sky Rich had all five guys cross backcourt and nobody back to, you know, help out on a fast break. And Langham Creek had just two guys wide open back there, two on nine. So it allows Langham to cut it back down to a one-point game, 24-23. Here's Femio into the paint, kicks it out on the wing. There's a long distance jumper from Williams. Won't go, but the follow is put up and in. And on the bucket that time, give the score to Tone Ray Reynolds. Here's Newsom back the other way, and he gets it to kiss off the glass and go down through for two. 26 25, steal by. Quinn Taylor on the run, slams it home with the two-handed rim right there. And that gives Langham a 27-26 lead. So they were up in the first quarter for a while, surrendered the lead, and now they've recaptured it here. Five and a half to go. Tipped out of bounds by Langham. And here come the substitutes again for Cy Ridge. Fresh legs back in. Well, like we said, at the pace they're going, that's what they're going to need. And, you know, from a coach's standpoint, you know, you, you'd like to reward kids who have worked hard in practice. And, and, and from a parent's standpoint, you like to see your kids <laughs> playing too. Yeah, you know what that's like, Coach. You, you, hear what, you hear it when the kids don't get to play, don't you? Oh, exactly. It's Taylor underneath after the steal by Langham. Out to Segura, tries to go back down low to Newsom, and he had it tipped away, and they're going to say it's out off of the big fella. Six foot nine, and 
He's getting some looks from some schools around the area. Coach Amant was telling me before the game that UT, Rick Barnes and company over there are trying to get him to come on as a walk-on in Austin. He blocks one out on the perimeter there. I think somebody off from the scholarship in America. <laughs> yeah, and that, uh, uh, there's another thing parents like is scholarships. Exactly. <laughs> Here's a steal, and it goes back the other way. That's Shaq Lawson who tried to take it down through the traffic, and he is going to be fouled on his way. You know, Dan is one of those kids that look like you know, his best shears are probably ahead of him. He's probably going to put on some more weight. He's probably not through growing. You know, he might grow another two or three inches before he gets to be 20 years old. And, boy, it's sure he cannot coach size. And if he, you know, he's a long string bean looking kid too. If he fills out that body a little bit, he can take up some space down in the low blocks. This free throw again, and it stays right where it is at 27 apiece, all tied up. Carter, cross court to Segura. Almost stolen away, but Segura saves it. Looks to go high post to Taylor instead, down to Newsom in the corner. He finds Taylor, kicks it out on top for three. Won't go as it rattles out from Caleb Hobbs. The putback goes up and in and gives Langham the lead. That was Newsom who finished it off, and now he's got eight. Down low, Hernandez tried a baseline three. Won't go. On the run, Carter beats Hernandez to the hole and gets it off the glass for two. Here's a runner put up by Lawson, and he almost got that acrobatic shot to go. It would not fall. Hobbs back the other way. Carter in the corner. Takes it to the middle. Dishes it out from the wing. Segura can't get it to go. Rebound is tipped around, and we've got a whistle. As Hobbs hits the deck, and he's going to be called for the foul. Like the hustle there, Coach, but he was a little bit out of control reaching through the body there, it looked like. <laughs> Armand Colas, number 25 for Cy Ridge, was in the way, and so Caleb Hobbs decided to go right through him, and Colas will go to the line. Four oh seven to go in the first half. The first free throw is good. Colas is a six two senior. Second free throw, no good. Rebound controlled by Taylor, and he gets it up ahead on the run. In the middle, they feed it to Newsom. Can't finish it off, but the rebound is controlled by Brad Fuzz Regenovich. He's checked into the game for the Lobos. Vigenovich inside tried to feed Newsom in the low blocks, and it was knocked away. Nice defensive play by Cy Ridge. Vigenovich on the baseline will get it inbounds for the Lobos. Feeds it inside to Kobe Allen, and it's stolen away. A lady who brings it up. Leaves it for Williams. He'll carry it back out to the top. Directs traffic. Finds Femi on the left wing. Dribbles a couple of times. Loses his dribble. And now he gets it back outside to Reynolds. Clock winding down. And out on top. Here's a backdoor screen. And underneath is Femi. Oh, and he can't get it to go. But he will be fouled and go to the line. Nice little no-look pass underneath there. That was Trey Williams who had the feed and would have gotten an assist with a star by it had that one gone down through. But as it is, Femi heads to the line and misses the first one. Fifty-three percent free throw shooter gets one out of two, and so that's about. What you'd expect, it's down to a two-point game again, 31-29. Taylor in the corner. 
Gets it across over there, and that is Kobe Allen on the dribble. He is going to be fouled by Trey Williams. Allen managed to dribble through traffic there. A couple of guys around him, and then it was Williams who came in and reached in for the steal and got called for the foul. I think that was one of those fouls where Trey Williams just went to clock to stop and get a little rest. <laughs> Allen hits the first free throw. He's got one more to come. You know, the, the, the other thing about going at a pace like this, you've got to have guys who keep your legs fresh on your team, Coach, but you kind of force maybe your op, uh, opposing coach to go a little deeper into his bench than he might like. Exactly. And, you know, when it boils down to your bench, might be better than his bench. It, you know, could be a difference maker in the game. 33-29, the free throws were good by Allen. Gives Langham a four-point lead. Here's Palio looking for help. Williams finally comes to help him out. Dribbles it left side on the ISO. Goes across to Palio. Dribbles it down through and gets it to Femio. On the baseline, he gets it to Hernandez. Partially blocked by Taylor, though. Saved out top to Aledu for three. Won't go in the rebound. Pulled down by Newsom. Good defense that time. Laying him up ahead. Carter tries to feed Taylor. Knocked away by Robert Aledu. With 2.24 to go here until halftime. It'll be baseline out. Belong to the Langham Creek Lobos. Here's a nice inbound speed to Taylor. He could not get it to go on the alley-oop. And the rebound is pulled down and controlled by Cy Ridge. Aledu into traffic. And we're going to have a blocking foul called on Gilbert Carter. He tried to set up. May have been a little too far underneath there, Coach. Let's look at it again. Yeah, he might have been moving a little bit. Yep. You know, Sometimes guys just don't stand still and just sacrifice their whole body. And you, know, you just got to take that pain if you want to get that call. <laughs> It's easy to stand there and anticipate the contact, too. Isn't exactly. It? <laughs> Looked like Carter was trying to buy the foul before it ever got to him, and he wasn't successful there. So first free throw, though, is no good. One more to come for Robert Aledu, and it is good. So now it's out or cut back to a three-point lead, 33-30. The scoring pace has slowed down here a little bit in the second quarter. The teams haven't slowed down the pace of the game, though, as they're up and down the court. Shots just aren't quite falling as quickly as they were in the first quarter, but there's a little baseline jumper from 10 feet for Taylor. Nice-looking arch on that shot. Here's the answer opposite way, and that's Reynolds, and he gets the three to go from the baseline. Give him five now. Little half-court pressure from Cy Ridge. Cross-court pass taken by Hobbs. He goes strong to the hole, won't go, and the rebound pulled down by Cy Ridge. Colas up the floor, into the corner, a long distance, three, and it is good. Darius Crawley hits it. And that brings us back to a lead for Cy Ridge, 36-35, and a steal. Rams with the basketball. Cross court, Reynolds, three, won't go. Rebound, pulled down by Colas, puts it back up, gets it to go, and he's fouled. Well, there's a case where good position under the boards beats good size. Yeah, he went back up strong and finished. Out to a three-point lead, 38-35, the plus one here, a line drive free throw, but it kisses the front iron, and then it bounces up and through, and so now it's back up to a four-point lead, and Coach Dibble says time for the other five to come in and take their last minute and a few seconds up and down the floor. Yeah, actually, that was a good, you know, good two minutes by that five that was just on the floor, and mm -hmm. worked hard and got the lead back to Cyrus. 63 seconds left here in the first half. A little bit of full court pressure. Segura gets it across, though. 
Winds up down low to Newsom and off the glass. He's got a good little touch down inside there and he gets it to go down through and it's back to a two point game, 39-37. On the run, Palayo tries to put the runner up with the left hand, Newsom with the board. Under 40 seconds to go, up the floor. Taylor takes it in through traffic and gets it to go down through. Ties it up again, 39 here. Come the Rams in a hurry on the baseline. Hernandez can't get it to go. Rebound is tipped and controlled by the Lobos. Taylor over to Newsom and he puts it up and in and Langham has recaptured the lead, 41-39. I think Coach Barnes might have a second thought about that scholarship. <laughs> He's a good looking player down in the low blocks. There's a long jumper, comes up short and the buzzer sounds. And that takes us to halftime. And our score at the half is Langham Creek 41, Cypress Ridge 39. Come back and talk about some of the first half numbers in this one and get you ready for the second half of play when we return on FoxSportsHouston.com. It's time to seek new adventures. It's time to celebrate local flavor in the state's capital. It's time for the Renaissance Austin Hotel. Nestled in the beautiful Arboretum, the Renaissance Austin offers a relaxing atmosphere with stunning views of the Texas Hill Country. If it's shopping you're looking for, it's all within walking distance. Go to Marriott.com and discover something wonderfully new at the Renaissance Austin. Try this. For the first time in McDonald's, your two favorite flavors together. New McCafe Caramel Mocha. Well, what do you guys think? Perfect. The simple joy of sweet harmony. Metter Staffing Services has one of the largest temporary health divisions in the Houston area. Each week, the company pays over 2,000 temporaries, working on many and varied assignments. Metter Staffing can help your company when you have needs for your employees. Call us at 713-941-0616 to speak with one of our experienced staffing consultants who can assist you with your staffing challenges. That number is 713-941-0616. They now offer video resumes as a job-seeking tool. Ask about it today. Metter Staffing. They know the people you need to know. I wanted something my whole family could enjoy. Danny loves basketball. Willie wants the batting cages. My husband's into football, and I'm training for a marathon. Then we found the sports house, and now I'm one happy mom. With single and family options available, we found the membership just right for us. The sports house offers a range of activities with group and private lessons overseen by pro and collegiate athletes. The sports house even has a party room and offers an additional 25% off on Sundays. Check them out at thesportshouse.net. Dream big, play hard, train smart. time of our game here at the Berry Center between the Langham Creek Lobos and the Cypress Ridge Rams and it's as close as those highlights you just saw would indicate 
Teams going back and forth up and down the floor. 41 to 39 is our score here. And along with head coach, our former head coach of the North Shore Mustangs, Joe Price. I'm Lonnie King, and welcome into the halftime show. Coach, uh, we talked about it during the first half, but this has really been Cy Ridge's pace of the game. But to this point, Langham Creek has been up to the task of staying with them. Exactly right. And, and Cy Ridge, I think they're doing what they need to do to stay in the game. They're bringing in fresh legs about every two minutes. And guys are coming in and, and, and doing productive things off the bench and, you know, making plays. And, and that's the difference. They've, they've caused they've caused Langan Creek to turn it over 12 times during the first half. There are only there are six turnovers. So, basically, that's what's keeping them in the game. The uh, Rams have put up a lot of three-point shots. They haven't really been hot from the outside. They've connected on some key ones, but they've missed a lot of the ones they've taken. Uh, I would imagine that, that Coach Dibble is in the locker room at the half telling his team, look, if we just start making some of the shots that we take, we'll be all right. Exactly right. And I think Coach Dibble is probably telling his guys, we got them right where we want them. You know, it's a two-point game. We've had the lead. We've been up. We've been down. And I think if we just keep playing where we're playing, playing hard and get production out of everybody, we got a chance to win this game. Uh, probably to no one's surprise, the leading scorer for Langham Creek here in the first half is Danny Newsom, the big 6'9 center, who's got 12 points. Quinn Taylor, uh, the 6'6 forward, has eight more for the Lobos. The leading scorer for Cy Ridge is Robert Oledu. He's got 11 in the first half, six off the bench for, uh, I'm sorry, not off the bench, but six for Cameron Hernandez and four from the point guard, Trey Williams. Williams may be the surprise there. He came in averaging 19 a game, held to just four, but he's one of the ones who's struggled a little bit shooting from the outside. Well, you know, you got to take what they give you, and, you know, like you said, he's struggled a little bit, but, you know, a guy who's averaging those kind of points, you got to tell him to keep shooting because right. eventually things – should change for you. Well, we'll take another break. When we come back, we'll talk about the uh, standings here in District 17 5A and get ready for the second half of this one coming up from the Berry Center. Langham Creek 41, Cypress Ridge 39 on Fox Sports Houston's Game of the Week. TV, LG Optima cell phone, and an apology card. This is ridiculous. Yeah, and it's got apps. Nice. It's got Pandora, Twitter. Facebook. No, honey, not Facebook. Honey, you think my sweater's horrendous? Cats don't skate. I think it kicks butt. Get low prices on the gifts they love, like LG TVs with the latest technology. Now eligible for our Christmas layaway. Save money. Live better. Walmart. Double-digit pay raises are history. Now money's a lot harder to get a hold of and even harder to hang on to. That's why I, State Farm Agent Earl Thompson, would like to offer you a free discount double check. I will go through your car insurance policy to make sure you are getting the discounts you deserve and aren't leaving any money on the table. So call me, State Farm Agent Earl Thompson in Houston, because being there to help keep more of your money in your pocket is why I'm here. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Interested in playing college sports? Follow the paths of hundreds of successful athletes at San Jacinto College. Our athletic programs offer men's basketball, baseball, and soccer, women's basketball, volleyball, and softball. All of our teams have an excellent reputation as most go on to compete in national championships. And some of our student athletes have gone professional. In fact, we have former players in Major League Baseball, NBA, and Major League Soccer. Visit SanJacksports.com for more information. San Jacinto College. Your goals, your college.
Well, we're just a couple of minutes away from the start of the second half, but while we are still here at the half and Langham Creek leading 41-39 to over Cy Ridge, you know, this district, Coach Price, is a uh, tough district year in and year out. This season's not going to be any different. Cy Falls has a good team back. Coach Jim Draught, who's been there for quite some time, uh, has his team out 20-3 and to start the season, 3-0 and in the district, but they're not alone. This Langham Creek team's also 3-0, and Cy Springs is 3-0 as well. So uh, a good team like Cy Ridge, who's lost three close games, on the other hand, is down at the bottom of the district, and that's why uh, I think they would really like to come away with a win tonight. Most definitely. You know, when you got a district with 10 teams in it, 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 it makes it tough. You have to come to play every night. Uh, like you said, Cy Ridge is 0-3, and they're – hungry for that first win and you know if they keep chipping away chipping away eventually it's going to happen but you're in a 10 team district only four four teams get to go to the playoffs and you know every every game counts well and they play 13 in the district so they've got an odd number you're not going to find a couple of teams tying and having to play off or at least it's very unlikely Uh, it's not out of the question that it would happen but that odd number game uh, usually means that, as you say, every district game is going to count for something. Exactly right. Cy Fair right behind the top three at 3-0. Three and oh. he, uh, They are 2-1, and one, and then Cy Lake, Cy Ranch, Cy Creek, and Jersey Village all 1-2, and two, and then Cy Ridge and Cy Woods 0-3. Oh We're underway here in the second half, and Cy Ridge has the basketball to get things going. Hernandez in the corner. He looks and finds Shaq Lawson, but Lawson can't hang on, loses it out of bounds, and it'll go back over to Langham Creek. That's a, a coach's worst nightmare is, is to start the second half off with a turnover. 41-39, just underway in the third quarter. Carter up ahead to Taylor. Taylor to Newsom. Newsom, a nice short-range jumper, can't get it to go. And Hernandez boxes out and pulls down the board. The lady who brings it up, right wing, gives it across to Williams. Williams for three, won't go. And he still struggles from outside the arc. Up ahead, here's Segura trying to go alley-oop to Taylor. He brings it down and goes under the hoop and lays it off the glass. 43-39, first points of the second half. There's a block by Newsom. And now on the floor, trying to save it is Segura, and he does. Thompson, who is checked back in, gets it up the floor. Check it, that's Johnson, but it's stolen away. Williams back the other way to the baseline, right side. Instead, he'll come back out to Ledu, and he'll dribble out to the top. Hernandez to Williams. Segura picks him up. Looks to go one-on-one, down through the paint on the baseline, finds a lady, and they bring it back out. He'll pull up, pop, fade away three, won't go, and Johnson pulls down the board. He got into early foul trouble and sat a lot of the first half, but he's back out there to start the third. Taylor down low, has it blocked. That was Femi on Wamegbu. Another fresh troops after two minutes. <laughs> So you go out there, you go hard for two minutes, and it's like a line change in hockey almost. (laughs) Come sit on the bench, and we'll get you some help out there. Here's Carter from three, and he hits from the left baseline. It's out to a seven-point lead. Langham Creek with the first five here to start the quarter, and there's the answer. That one from Tony Reynolds, who's checked in. Taylor to Hobbs and up the head to Johnson. Johnson can't get it to go, and the rebound is pulled down by Spencer Smith. Leaves it for Palio. He'll bring it up across the timeline. Gets it on the wing to Reynolds. Reynolds back out top to Colas. Feed Colas in the low blocks, and he turns and almost got it to go down through. Trying to 
Back it up and on the run there is Johnson with the bucket. He'll get it to go down through and he'll draw the foul. That's it again, nice little feed there from Carter to Johnson. So back out to a seven point lead, 48-41 and Johnson to the line for the plus one. He's got five and now six in the game. 49-41 with five minutes to go and counting here in the third quarter of play. Here's a backdoor cut through the paint. Palio couldn't do anything with it. Back out to Smith for three, won't go. Rebound those controlled by Cy Ridge. On the baseline, Palio can't get the long distance jumper to go. And these are shots that would normally fall for Cypress Ridge. They're just not tonight. Yeah, they're not falling. But, you know, you got to keep on shooting them to give them a chance to fall. Still 4.46 to go here in the third. Just an eight-point game. Not out of range by any stretch of the imagination. But, again, a shift change here as the starters head back out onto the floor. In the ball game. For Langham Creek is Eric Thomas. Down low to Segura. He has it stolen away. A lady on the run leaves it out for Shaq Lawson. Won't go. Lawson gets the board again, though. This time way out in the edge is A lady Won't go. And Newsom controls the board. Segura on the run. Up ahead to Johnson. Through traffic. Rolls around. Won't go down through. On the floor, the rebound is controlled by Cy Ridge. Williams brings it back up. Behind the back dribble, has it tipped and stolen away. Thomas to Segura, back to Thomas, knocked out of bounds, and it's going to be out off of Langham Creek. He tried a bounce pass there, and I think he hit the sideline with it. Yep. Another turnover. 49-41. We roll under four minutes to go here in the third quarter of play. Not a lot of timeouts, not a lot of stoppage of play, and the pace has been up and down. Here's Hernandez again, misses everything on the three. Rebound is kicked back out to Williams, won't go, and Femi Owabainu over the back. We call for the foul. Langham Creek basketball, they inbound it. Segura and Taylor break the press, get it up to Carter. Short range jumper from the left elbow, won't go. Johnson with the board off the glass too, and he's fouled. Eight points now for Eric Johnson, wants this again. That's where that size matters. And that weight room matters right there, too. <laughs> yeah. Hits the front iron with the free throw, and it bounces up and rolls right down through. So it's now out to an 11-point game, almost a steal. Double team on the ball, but Aledu splits it, takes it back up the floor, looks for help, kicks it across to Lawson in the corner. Hernandez, three short, but he comes down through. Hit the iron, bounced straight up, and went down through the cords. So that stops the bleeding for a moment. It's back down to eight, and there's a tied ball call. And the possession arrow is going to belong to Langham Creek. On the baseline, they get it in. Swing it around the arc. Segura has it double teamed out there. Now he looks for help. Almost throws it away, saved by Taylor. Finds Johnson, down low to Newsom. Off the glass, won't go. Johnson fights for the board, puts it up. And he's going to be called for the player control foul. Turn it around. Foul. I don't know about that one. <laughs> we'll watch it again. Got to admire the effort on the rebound, though. Oh, yeah, well, the guy might have been in position over there to his left side. So he draws the foul. It'll give it back over to Cypress Ridge, but Lobo's showing some pretty good hustle right now. Yeah, but one thing, that old saying, film don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> it don't yeah. lie. Yeah, it's always going to catch you. 
That's the third foul on Johnson, so he has to come take a seat on the bench. There's a long-range jumper from Reynolds, who's checked back in. He can't get it to go. Rebound is tipped around and controlled by Taylor to Segura. On the run, he'll pull up at the free throw line. Back out top, here's a three from Newsom, and he hits. Big fella saying, give that one to me. What is Newsom, 6'9"? Six 6'9 nine? Six nine is what they list him at. Here on the run, it's a nice little runner with the left hand put up and in, and that time it's Segura who finishes it off, and that's going to get a timeout as the big three from Newsom, the steal and finish by Segura, takes him out to a 13-point lead with 2.10 to go in the third quarter. We'll take a break here on FoxSportsHouston.com. For the first time in McDonald's, your two favorite flavors together. New McCafe Caramel Mocha. Well, what do you guys think? Perfect. The simple joy of sweet harmony. Remember when I got my first Texans football? <laughs> then of course I had to have my own Texans jersey. Well, nothing beats this year when I got my own Texans checking account. Now it's my turn. I got this one, Dad. Exclusively at First Community Credit Union, your choice of designs, plus chances to win great prizes, trips, and game day tickets for all Texans checking account holders. You think these make me look taller? Game day every day. Carry the Texans in your wallet. Exclusively at First Community Credit Union. TexansChecking.com. Saw Jerome Segura finish off that last bucket. Interesting story about how he's even in the lineup this year for Coach Amen. There's a steal by Quinn Taylor. He's going to take it up and over Reynolds for the bucket. And now it's out to a 15-point lead. So now Ridge getting a little bit out of sync on offense. With their backups in, here's a long distance jumper from Reynolds, won't go. Colas pulls down the board, he can't get it to go, but he'll draw the foul. Taylor will pick it up, his second personal. Coach, we're talking about Segura though, the point guard for Langham Creek, number one out there. Sophomore point guard, he's in there because in the first weekend at the McDonald's Texas Invitational, Coach Amen and the Lobos lost their senior point guard, Ryan Patrick, tore an ACL, and he's done for the season. And Coach uh, Amen was saying that that was kind of a turning point. He didn't know what was going to happen. His team lost a couple of games early in the pre-district season, but Segura has emerged, and he's really done a good job here tonight. Well, he's probably gotten better and better every game that he's played, and so... You know, like you said, it looks good from the standpoint of you got him two more years. And yeah, and I guess as a coach, you would have to say that's really valuable when you've got a guy who's going to run your point, and there is Carter who lays it up and in for two. But you get a guy who's going to run your point as a sophomore, he's going to know your offense for the next two seasons, like exactly you said. Exactly right. It's almost like having a coach on the floor. On the run, Segura. Up ahead intended for Taylor, but he couldn't hold on to it. Looked away before he had it in control. Stolen back by Syria to Ledu in the corner to Trey Williams for three, and he hits it. So there's Williams getting a bucket, and that takes him up to seven points, his first bucket of the second half. Tried to feed the big fella in low, and it's stolen away by Hernandez. Ledu will bring it up. He's going to pop from three-point land. A high arching shot rattles out. Newsom pulls down the board, and he is going to be fouled underneath. Personal, I think, is going to be called on Trey Williams, his third personal. So a little bit of foul trouble for their leading score. 47 seconds to go in the third. We got a, a little hold. A little hold on the inbounds. Lawson picks it up that time. Shaquille Lawson, his first personal. Carter will get it in, and he thought Segura was going to cut to his left, and Segura started back to the right, and the ball sails out of bounds. So 
Cy Ridge will get it right back with 47 seconds. Now, if you're Coach Dibble here for Cy Ridge, I, you you got to want your team to finish strong here at the end of the quarter. Exactly right. And, you know, if they can cut this thing inside of 10 points, it, it's still anybody's game. There's a nice pass underneath, and there's one that goes. Femi, oh, gets it to go down through, and he'll go to the line for the plus one. And there's a quick way to get it back down to 10 or less. Just took three seconds off the clock. And the plus one is short. The rebound is tipped. Saved by Quinn Taylor. And almost stolen away. Tipped and knocked out of bounds by Hernandez. <laughs> Got a fingertip on it. <laughs> Got a timeout on the floor here with... 41 seconds to go. It's a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. As I don't know if Coach Aidman is trying to get a set play at the end of the quarter or, or what. Uh, he's <laughs> busy talking to the officials about something. I'm not sure I what the argument is. He's got possession of the basketball and. Uh, not sure, but the officials now are talking something over. What do you think that might be about? Uh, they must be talking about each other's broker. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing I can think of. <laughs> we heard them talking about that before the game, didn't we? <laughs> right. They all talking. My broker is E.F. Hudden. And <laughs> people listen. E.F. Hudden says <laughs> everybody stop to listen. <laughs> well, they got it figured out, whatever it was. Maybe they were talking about, well, I don't know what it could be. See some of the crowd here at the Berry Center tonight. This is a beautiful facility, football stadium, that if you were with us during football season for our games of the week. We were out here a couple of times, and the arena is just as nice. Holds nearly 9,000 people. Here's a look underneath, and it is stolen away. After the missed shot by Trey Williams, and he brings it up the floor in a hurry. Pulls up for three, too strong off the back iron that time. Fights for the rebound, though, and Williams will knock it out of bounds. It'll be Langham Creek basketball. <laughs> 18 seconds to go in the third quarter, 61 to 50, an 11 point lead for the Lobos. They've had it up as high as 15 in this quarter. Down low. Underneath, it's Newsom. Newsom can't get it to go. Quinn Taylor tried to get the rebound. We've got a jump ball called, and this one will belong to Cy Ridge. Five seconds now. They've got time to hurry it up the floor, and they will. Here comes Palio on the run. Leave it for Williams. He'll put up a three at the buzzer, and it's short. And we'll go to the fourth quarter. And Langham Creek will have a double-digit lead, 61 to 50. Eight minutes to go, and the Lobos trying to move to 4-0 in 17-5A here on FoxSportsHouston.com. When it just can't wait, come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. Chances are you spent plenty of time dreaming about it. Nothing but carefree days of doing whatever you want, whenever you want. Retirement. You've dreamed about it, but have you planned for it? Don't put it off any longer. Turn to an agent you know from State Farm, the company you trust, to help you with annuities, health insurance, IRAs, and rollovers. Call me, Earl Thompson, today at 281-893-0550, providing insurance and financial services. With 
more of the game tonight. You heard Charles Amitt, the head coach of Langham Creek, talking about the balance scoring for his team. And tonight has been a pretty good indicator of that. Gilbert Carter has 15. Danny Newsom has 15. Quinn Taylor has 12. Three guys in double figures tonight, Coach. That's basically what you want. No. Can you hear me? Yeah. Basically what you want, the contribution from quite a few guys. And Today I was fortunate enough, 1989, to win the state championship and had all five starters in double figures. It, it, it really made it fun. <laughs> I guess. Makes it easy to coach, huh? Oh, exactly right. I was the greatest coach in Texas. <laughs> well, that goes without saying anyway. Newsom adds to his total. He gets the two to go. He's got 17 and will go to the line as he was fouled. That's the sixth team foul on Cy Ridge. So the rest of the way, the Lobos will be in the bonus. And we're just 13 seconds into the fourth quarter. Free throw from Newsom is good. And he's up to 18 points tonight. Bounce pass in the paint. Femi tried to feed Colas, but it's tipped and stolen away. Segura on the run up ahead of Carter behind everybody. Lays it up and in for two. Well, Langham Creek has shown when they have to, they don't mind moving the ball up and down the floor. No, they don't. You know, in spite of the fact they got that size, they still get up and down the floor, you know, pretty rapid. Carter and Segura are very impressive. They're quick up and down the the floor and uh, the ball was tipped out of bounds that time. It'll stay in possession of Cy Ridge. Baseline out and Aledu will do the honors. I tell you, I'm impressed with uh, Langham Creek. They got quite a few guys who can play on the next level. Out top, Colas finds Aledu, the senior captain. Dribbles out to the top, looks for help. Left side to Colas. Find Lawson. Lawson will dribble back to the middle, picked up by Carter. To the left baseline, down low. Dribbling in is Colas. He kicks it out with a bounce pass to Aledo. But Newsom hops out and he takes it down past him and the rebound is controlled by Langham Craig Newsom. And he is gonna be fouled. And that's gonna be on Femi Ogwam Ogwamainu. That sounds yeah. close. <laughs> it's, I tell you. Yeah, we apologize if, uh, if it's not close enough, but Coach said he, he sometimes has trouble pronouncing his own last name. So if Femi can't get it, how can how can we be expected to to get it right? Well, if, if I was his coach, his name would always be Finney. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much what Coach Dibble said as well. Yeah. Bonus time, and Newsom will head to the line on, on the other end. As that's the seventh team foul, so the one and one to come here for the Lobos and just under seven minutes to go. They'll be shooting the rest of the way in. And they're out to a 16, now 17 point lead, 67-50. They've scored the first six here in the fourth quarter and they got out to a nice run to start the third quarter. So quick starts here in the second half in both quarters have extended the lead out 68 to 50. Here's Trey Williams for three, rattles it down through. Long distance dial up there. And it's 68-53, Carter, long pass, almost stolen away and it is tipped into the backcourt. Spencer Smith, who's checked back in, was fighting Segura for control and it's gonna be out of bounds off of Smith. He tried to come up with the steal, but Langham will keep possession. Coach, if you're the Lobos, do you try and slow the pace down here or go with what's been working for you? Well, there's the answer. Is Johnson lays it off the glass off the feed from Segura. I think you just got to keep going with that same pace. Another three rattles off. This time won't go. And Carter gets the board to Eric Johnson, and he's going to be tied up. Are they calling it a tied ball? I think they called a foul. And it's going to be on Spencer Smith of Cy Ridge. Watch it here. He just tried to come in and a little too much muscle there instead of basketball. And so 
It'll send Johnson to the line to shoot the one and one. Stick with us. Coming up at the end of this one, we'll talk with the head coach of the winning team and put the wraps on the action here from the Berry Center tonight. Very entertaining game in the first half. This was a two-point game at the half, and the Lobos have really opened it up here in the third and fourth quarters, out to 18 points. The second free throw is no good. It's 71-53, though as Johnson now has 12. So they've got four guys in double figures. That's a two-pointer, it's good, and give the bucket to Williams. He's now in double figures with 12 and becomes the leading scorer for Cy Ridge right now. Newsom from the baseline comes up short, but Johnson with the board follows it up and in for two. 73-55, Langham Creek in control here. Williams dribbles into the paint, puts up the runner. Teardrop won't go down through, off the back iron. Johnson quickly up ahead, Carter on the outlet. Alley-oop to Taylor. Nice feed, nice finish, and it's out to a 20-point lead. Here's Colas in the paint, just inside the free throw line. He's going to be bumped and fouled. And that may be number four on Johnson. Normally with five minutes to go. No, they're not going to call it on Johnson. It'll be on Quinn Taylor, his third. So say normally, Coach, you wouldn't want your one of your key players in, in the four foul range with over five minutes to go. But at this point in the game, a 20-point lead, you got to feel comfortable no matter what happens out there, I guess. Yeah, exactly right. You just tell him to just keep playing. And... You know, if he if he's looking back and forth and, and saying, Coach, I don't want to get my last foul, you can tell him, well, <laughs> you, you can not get it over on the here bench anyway. over here. Yeah. Here's the girl on the run, tried to feed Taylor again. This time it goes off the glass, and the timing just was not there. Almost a spectacular-looking play. But it will go back over to Cy Ridge. And now they're in the bonus as they called a foul on that one. No, they're not in the bonus. It's team foul number six, it looks like. And so the officials are bringing the Rams over to the sideline, and they'll inbound the ball at half court. Williams to Palio. Looks inside. The cutter came through, but too much traffic. Back out to Aledu. He looks baseline. Out top, Aledu for three. A high arching shot goes down through. And I'm sure Coach Dibble saying, where have those been all night? Yeah, really. Segura, cross court, full court pressure, but easily broken. And Johnson now up to 16 points. And again, four players in double figures now for the Langham Creek Lobos. Here's a foul going to be whistled against Segura. Jerome Segura will pick up his second personal. Here are the numbers. Gilbert Carter, 17 points. Quinn Taylor, 14 points. Eric Johnson, 16 points. Danny Newsom, 20 points for Langham Creek tonight. That's, that's four guys in the starting lineup, isn't it? Yep, sure is. And they're all out there on the floor right now, so... I think Coach will give him about two more minutes and he'll probably <laughs> clear his bench. Foul on that shot by Trey Williams. He'll go to the line to shoot a pair. Foul was called on Segura. He's got three now. And this time it is the bonus. But a shooting foul anyway, so Williams will get two and misses the front end. One more to come. Williams' second free throw is good. And Cy Ridge, who'd been on that number for a while, now gets into the 60-point range with four minutes to go. Johnson down low to Newsom. Turn around with the hook shot. Comes out. Won't go down. Rebound by Femi O. He gets it off to Aledu. Aledu cross-court pass in the corner to Hernandez. 
Back out top to Aledu, and he gets the fadeaway for three. And we've got a whistle and a timeout. Aledu hit the deck there. Watch this again. He might have came down on another guy's foot. Maybe tweaked his ankle. Well, we've got a timeout on the floor. 3.43 to go and a 14-point lead for Langham Creek. We'll come back with the end of this one here on FoxSportsHouston.com. Shopping Services has one of the largest temporary health divisions in the Houston area. Each week, the company pays over 2,000 temporaries, working on many and varied assignments. Meta Staffing can help your company when you have needs for your employees. Call us at 713-941-0616 to speak with one of our experienced staffing consultants who can assist you with your staffing challenges. That number is 713-941-0616. They now offer video resumes as a job-seeking tool. Ask about it today. Meta Staffing. They know the people you need to know. Well, the Langham Creek fans across the way looking on and part of the student section down there near the floor, and they've got a reason to be happy right now. Their team is up by 14 points, and it's been as much as a 20-point lead here at times in the second half for Langham Creek. And now for the Lobos, it's a matter of just controlling the pace of this one and keeping that comfortable distance between themselves and Cy Ridge. Taylor brings it up, in through traffic, tries a bounce pass down low, but knocked away. It's going to be off of Cy Ridge. Reynolds got a hand on it. Baseline out, it'll belong to the Lobos. Newsom takes the entry pass, won't go. Johnson's rebound is blocked, and here comes Williams on the run. Doesn't have the number, so he'll kick it back out. Swing it. To his running mate, and that is Darius Crawley, and he misses everything from three-point range. And it'll go back over to the Lobos. Well, that kind of sums up the night for Cy Ridge. A lot of those missed threes. Well, you definitely want your legs to be in shape, especially this late in the game. <laughs> but like you say, they've been running five guys in about every two or three minutes, so you would think. Shouldn't be our ball night. <laughs> and, and, Coach, it's, uh, it's going to be a tough loss, it looks like, for, for Cy Ridge. As we, you can tell they're a team with some talent, but this Langham Creek team looks like they could be serious contenders, not only in this district, but maybe give some people some problems in the playoffs as well. Exactly right. There's a runner put up and in by Johnson. He's got 18 now as we roll under three minutes to go in this one. And it's 79 to 63. With the size that Langham Creek has, and they're showing the ability tonight to move up and down the floor. That's, uh, you, you said early tonight before the game, you'd always like to have both size and speed. And there's a block by Newsom. Up ahead, Taylor to Carter. Lays it up and in for two. And that's going to get a timeout. From Coach Steve Dibble, he wants to talk it over with his team. But, uh, Coach, when you've got good size, that's that's a plus. You see Coach Dibble there. He's not real happy right now. You wouldn't expect him to be. Yeah, good size is a plus, along, along with having good guards to go with that good size helps too. Well, they, they seem to be brewing a pretty good little recipe here for this district now. Be interesting to see, as we mentioned, Cypress Falls, who has gone 20 and 3. They've got some pretty good size as well on their front line. That would probably be a good ball game to see, you know, Langham Creek and Cypress Falls. Yeah. No coach drought does a great job year in and year out. Yeah, he, he's really, uh, and of course, has been there for, for quite a while now at, at Cypress Falls. This uh, Langham Creek team. And Cy Falls, in fact, will not see each other, though, until later on. February the 3rd is the only time these two teams will face. They divide this 10-team district up into two zones, five-team zones. And you play the four teams in your zone two times, and that's eight games. And then you play the five teams in the other zone five or one time. That's five games for the 13-game district schedule. 
You know, Coach Drought has a son that coaches in the district, too, I believe. At Cy Woods, yes, sir. Palayo's got the ball for Cy Ridge out of the timeout. No look pass, Aledu in the corner. And he finds Crawley. He can't get the three to go. And Carter on the run. Back out to Segura. And now they're looking like they're trying to pass it around in the half court. That one's stolen away. Back the other way. Here's Palayo with the long jumper. Won't go. And the rebound comes down to Langham one more time. Segura this time will pull up and pop. Followed by Taylor. And he gets it to go. Quinn Taylor now with 16. And it's out to a 20-point lead again, 83-63. Jumper put up by Williams. Won't go. Johnson with the board for Langham. Taylor up ahead on the run, and he walked with it. Well, he was – that's one of those when you're up by 20, coach won't get too upset about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Williams feeds Aledu. He can't get it to go. It misses everything. Femi O tried to save it, but he saves it to Langham Creek. And up ahead, Segura's pass is stolen away by Williams. So now down to the final 60 seconds. This one's going to go in the books as the Langham Creek win. They will pick up number 18 on the season. Here is Johnson. Lays it up and in off the feed from Carter. And that's going to call or bring us to a timeout with 56 seconds to go, a 30-second timeout. So I think this is another one of those catch-your-breath type stoppages. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I think Coach Amon about ready to clear his bench. <laughs> well, what do you say when you're up by 22 points with under a minute to go? And again, it, this really this score isn't indicative of the kind of game this was in the first half. Exactly right. You know, Langham Creek pretty much kind of pulled away there at last two or three minutes of the third quarter, and you know, carried it over in the fourth quarter. But they had about eleven point lead going into the fourth quarter, and just kind of build on it. Well, as we said, stick around. We'll try and catch up with Coach Charles Amen after this one and talk with him about. Win number four in the district. Cy Ridge with the basketball. Low blocks. Colas turn around. Won't go. Rebound to Smith. He puts it up. Won't go. The follow on the third shot. Another look. Four looks at the basket. Won't go. And this one is finally controlled by Smith. So Cy Ridge keeps control of it. The clock is winding down. There's a three. Won't go. Smith again gets it to go. Good hustle. Good effort by Cy Ridge all the way through that sequence. He and had about four or five offensive boards in that yep. sequence. And it'll send Smith to the line to try and cut it back down under 20 points. 85-65 and 85-66 now. As he gets the plus one, he's got three, his first three of the night. And it comes in the last 30 seconds of the ball game. And now the bench has emptied out for the Lobos. James Taylor is out there along with Eric Thomas. There's a long range three. And that bucket is good. Give the bucket to, I believe, Reynolds. And that brings... The buzzer and the final score tonight is 85-69. The Langham Creek Lobos come away with a 17-point win over the Cy Ridge Rams. Take a break. We'll come back and visit with the head coach, Charles Amen, in just a moment on FoxSportsHouston.com. Just for these hectic holidays, McDonald's introduces a cup of holiday cheer. It's McCafe's new peppermint mocha and peppermint hot chocolate. Holiday cheer with chocolate on top. <laughs> the simple joy of unwinding. Hey, sports fans. You've got to get to the sports house. 
The Sports House, located at 2738 Gulf Freeway, features over 22,000 square feet of indoor air-conditioned sports fun with state-of-the-art athletic training packed into every inch of the place. Got big dreams? The Sports House offers comprehensive lesson packages and sports clinics for a wide range of sports, including baseball, softball, volleyball, basketball, and football. And if you're looking to fine-tune your game, we offer speed and agility training too. And every sports house lesson and clinic is overseen by a professional or collegiate athlete. You'll get instruction you can't find anywhere else. And mom and dad, we can host that special party for your young athlete in our party room. Call us today at 281-557-TEAM. The Sports House, again located at 2738 Gulf Freeway. Dream big, play hard, train smart. 281-558-57-TEAM. The Sports House. When it just can't wait, come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. Remember when I got my first Texans football? <laughs> then of course I had to have my own Texans jersey. Well, nothing beats this year when I got my own Texans checking account. Now it's my turn. I got this one, Dad. Exclusively at First Community Credit Union. Your choice of designs plus chances to win great prizes, trips, and game day tickets for all Texans checking account holders. You think these make me look taller? Game day every day. Carry the Texans in your wallet. Exclusively at First Community Credit Union. TexansChecking.com. Where's your toys after dinner? It's beautiful. Mason. Really, buddy? Wow. Samantha G. Guys, Christmas dinner and you're bringing toys to the table? That's, that's not a toy. Let's eat. Get low prices on the gifts they love. And layaways back so you can pay a little at a time. Save money. Live better. Walmart. Chances are you spent plenty of time dreaming about it. Nothing but carefree days of doing whatever you want, whenever you want. Retirement. You've dreamed about it, but have you planned for it? Don't put it off any longer. Turn to an agent you know from State Farm, the company you trust, to help you with annuities, health insurance, IRAs, and rollovers. Call me, Earl Thompson, today at 281-893-0550, providing insurance and financial services. We knew it going in that they were just going to make some and sometimes there's not a whole lot you can do about it and just, you know, uh, for us it was about taking care of the ball and just, you know, making good decisions in transition and, um, you know, when you shoot balls that, when you shoot through ball that much, uh, you get some long rebounds and so, you know, you, you got to be able, and then they pressed you so much you had to just get through that first wave and if you could get through that first wave, you had an opportunity to play three on two and two on one and I feel like we have a lot of kids that can that play that way, you know. So kids did a good job. We kind of weathered the storm, kind of figured it out in the first half. I think the uh, big key for us is when uh, Eric Johnson got in foul trouble, number 41. He does such a great job of getting loose balls and things like that. And then it allows us, when he plays, it allows Danny and Quinn and those guys a little rest. But um, it, he, he was a big key you know, and his foul trouble. And so when he stayed in for periods, I think that's when we made runs. So he was important. Yeah, you, you talked about uh, the, missing him in the first half, got into the foul trouble. You also uh, turned the ball over a little bit in the first half. Looked like you cut that out or at least cut down on it in the second half. Yeah, I mean, when you like you can go against this pace and you can go against it and you can go against it, like, but you can't simulate it a lot of times in practice. And so it takes the kids a little bit more just to go through the reads. And that was <laughs> there wasn't much that we needed to do at halftime, just make a few adjustments, go through the reads, use ball fakes and things like that. And we, we were trying to dribble out of it instead of just pitching the ball, you know. And, and that's just a little bit of Jerome Segura being a little bit young and just pitching it. But he's so good in the open floor that a lot of times he doesn't want to pitch it up. But the way we decide is pitch it up and we're going to get it back to him in transition. And he's just still trying to figure that out. But did a great job of executing down the stretch and, you know, and, and the kids did a great job. I, I think we had, did we have four guys 
in double digits and close to 20, I think, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you told yeah. me before the game yeah. you had four guys that could average 20 points a game, and yeah. you almost got that out of them tonight. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's what we do. We, you, you know, you see it when we played our best. We're just unselfish and lots of guys that can do really good things. And so we, we feel great about where we are in the region and in the district, and we just got to keep going. In our district, there are just no off nights, even though it ended up being a 16-point margin. I mean, it, it didn't feel that way on the sidelines because they can shoot the three ball so well. Well, real quick before we let you go, let's do talk about the district. You're 4-0 now in the district, but you got some company up there at the top, and, and this is going to be kind of one of those dogfight districts. I guess it always is, yeah. though, in 17-5-8. It always is. You know, I think that um, the separation is kind of soft falls in us at the top spots, but if we don't play well, uh, we can definitely get clipped by by Cy Lakes and Cy Springs, and those guys, you know, do a lot of things that bother us. And then if you're not ready to play against a team, that the rest of those guys, you know, and, and that's what our guys do a great job of. They come out, they know their role, they know what they're supposed to do, and they know that if we play together, that that we have a chance to be really good, no matter who it is. And and that's what that that tough dis- non-district schedule has done for us, playing the likes of Strake and Seven Lakes and Flower Mound Marcus and North Crowley and Richardson Berkner and just you know on and on and on but those guys know it you know it, we're just you know small margins away from being you know terrific and we got a chance to be great uh, but I, I feel like we're, we're getting better you know every day and, and I feel like our best basketball is still ahead of us in the district and so you know there that that's one thing as a coach you don't want to peak too early but you still want to play really good you know throughout so I, I feel like our guys are really buying in and and each night you know if you come and watch us play another night if it's a slow down, methodical, we may have some other guys that, that really shine on those nights. And so it, it, it kind of dictates uh, the pace, and we feel like we got multiple pieces, you know, for the type of game to be able to play and, and keep up with most people around here. Well, nice win for you tonight. And I would imagine a lot of the other coaches, if they're watching this tonight, are saying, well, if your best basketball is yet to come, that's pretty scary stuff. No, I, I feel like it because I feel like there are lots of areas to improve. And you know what? The, the great thing about this group of kids is that when you tell them that, that there's plenty, even though we win tonight and we've, we've, I think we're six games in a row that we've won, maybe seven, can't remember, six or seven, but they, they understand we still got plenty of things improved because we've played so many tough teams. They know that the difference is just one, one small margin, you know, one small possession, either defensively or offensively, and we were on the losing end of those for a few of those times. So they, they know how hard it is, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we just stay with the process one, one game at a time, one play at a time, and it's old coaching cliche. But I feel like this group has really embodied that and taken that message and understand that there's no relaxing to be great. Good win tonight. Congratulations. 18-7 and seven now and 4-0 in the district. Charles Amon, the head coach of the Langham Creek Lobos. Coach Joe Price and I will come back. We'll put a wrap on this one tonight here from the Berry Center on FoxSportsHouston.com. HBU has returned to NCAA Division I Athletics. Come and enjoy the most intimate setting of all of Division I. HBU Athletics is also the most affordable entertainment option in Houston. The HBU Huskies, a member of the Great West Conference, experience success on the field with conference championships in women's soccer, women's golf, and softball. With great recruiting classes in men's and women's basketball and baseball, HBU Athletics is on the move and on the way up. For more information on HBU opportunities in the classroom and on the field, visit us on on the web, hbuhuskies.com. Back at the Berry Center here, and again, our final tonight is Langham Creek 85 and Cypress Ridge 69. Coach, uh, we talked about it during the game, but really the first half was a lot closer than the final score indicates. Yeah, exactly right. I, I thought Cypress Ridge did about all he could do there in the first half to, you know, stay in the ball game. It was a two-point game at halftime, but Langham Creek just had too much depth, too much experience, and, you know, that's what it amounted to, experience versus inexperience and, and you know we talked about height versus non-height but hey it, it came down to experience and, and you mentioned this as well but uh, height is one thing height with some talent alongside it is a pretty good thing to have exactly right and especially if you got some good guards to go with them and I thought you know Lane Creek guards did a good job of getting the ball to the big guys and, and rewarding them and you know they had four guys in double figures and, and, and that helps too 
And Coach Zayman was just telling us in, in his uh, post-game interview, he still thinks his team's best basketball is yet to come. Got a sophomore point guard still sort of feeling his way through. Did a good job tonight, but boy, if this team still has their best basketball yet to come this year, that's a scary proposition for their opponents. And you would hope that point guard gets better and better each, each week, you know, after or each game after losing a top point guard early in the year. You know, his, his sophomore has come in and he's probably got better each game and it's going to take your point guard to get you going. Well, they got it going tonight. 85-69 to 69 is the final score. Langham Creek with a win here on our FoxSportsHouston.com Game of the Week. For, head, uh, for former head coach Joe Price and for the entire crew that brought you this one, I'm Lonnie King, and we thank you for being with us tonight. We'll see you next week on the FoxSportsHouston.com Game of the Week. So long, everybody.